hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day with your family. I know I got to celebrate with my wife, the mother of my child, Aww. also my mother-in-law, and I called my mother who's in Virginia. Well, I called my mom too. There's nothing like being a mom, but it's clearly not easy. And some moms, uh, including newest moms, uh, face challenges, including postpartum depression. Uh, this weekend, the first anniversary of a federal hotline helping new moms struggling with mental health. The number's on your screen, 833-TLC-MAMA. White House correspondent Allison Harris reveals the pervasive maternal health issues that are keeping the hotline busy every single day since its launch. Allison. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, Mitch. The most common complications of pregnancy and childbirth all involve mental health. Experts in this field will tell you it is underfunded, under-researched, and highly stigmatized. Now it's getting the attention of the federal government, encouraging moms like me to talk about it. We know that women often don't speak up or, or say what they're going through. Catherine Oker, a special assistant to the president, is part of the White House effort to expand the around-the-clock confidential hotline for moms who are overwhelmed, anxious, depressed, or experiencing any kind of mental health crisis, connecting moms with trained professionals. In its first year, 1-833-TLC-MAMA received a 1,000 calls and texts each month on average. What does that say about the state of maternal mental health in this country? Well, it says a lot. I think maternal mental health complications are the number one complication of pregnancy and postpartum, uh, affecting one in five women. And so this is a huge issue. Reproductive health is a huge issue for the U.S., the only high-income country to have a rising maternal mortality rate. The rates for women of color are two to three times higher than for white women. So something is clearly wrong and we have to do better. Harvard researcher Dr. Sharon Deckel is developing a tool used to screen veterans of war to detect childbirth PTSD in new moms. We do know that the idea of disclosing a trauma for people who have PTSD, that's a, that's a symptom. People you do not disclose. They feel embarrassed. They feel shame. That's part of the, the PTSD syndrome. The shame, the guilt, I felt my baby. That hits close to home for this White House correspondent. Despite years covering stories of combat veterans struggling with PTSD, I never imagined the panic attacks I'd been having in the weeks following my daughter's birth were signs of psychological trauma. It turns out the complications I dealt with at the end of pregnancy, delivering early via emergency C-section, and the days my daughter spent on a breathing machine in the neonatal intensive care unit are all indicators. We screen women for PTSD, then I think people would actually feel comfortable to share their stories. And Dr. Deckel tells me that even just providing a safe space for new moms to share a short story, uh, just 300 words, on their birthing experience, that can be effective in identifying whether they have experienced psychological trauma. Now, both researchers and the Biden administration are really trying to shed this stigma around maternal mental health and even just mental health in general. That hotline, again, is 1-833-TLC-MAMA. It is funded for $10 million a year through 2027. Ten. Mitch and Adrian. That's a lot of money. I'm surprised. But, I mean, seriously... A lot of compassion going to moms. Just talking about it is going to help. It's amazing that Allison was willing to share her personal story. Oh, we're so grateful. It is never that easy to share personal mental health struggles. So thank you, Allison, for that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.